Hi, I'm Willie with H5 Technology. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here, and I appreciate each and every one of you. So this is kind of part two of the network expansion project that I'm working on. And uh, what I'm going to show you today is the Microtik wireless wire. We're going to open up, open this up. I'd like to thank my friend Steven for sending this over. I appreciate it very much. Uh, we're going to have a, hopefully, we're going to have a one gigabit uh, full duplex wireless connection to the workshop. That would be fantastic. So you can see this is still shrink wrapped, so I'm opening it with you. I've never laid hands on this until right now. And I don't know what to expect. Uh, I'm hopeful. I've read some comments. Some of you have commented on the video. Apparently someone has had some power problems with this and they burned out. I don't know if that's nurture or nature. Um, but we're going to find out. So what do you get in the box? Of course it comes in just a pretty plain Jane cardboard box with uh, information on the back. On the front it tells us that it's uh, 1 gigabit over wireless with 100 plus meter range, 60 gigahertz radio, gigabit ethernet, paired secure link pre-configured, and you can power it by AF, AT, or passive PoE, or with the DC jack. So you have four different PoE options for this. That's outstanding. Um, four different options. And then on the back it kind of shows us a typical deployment. Our deployment's not going to quite look like this. Uh, we are going to plug this in. We're going to look at the interface. We will uh, maybe plug in the other side, see what happens. I don't want to create any kind of a, a loop in my network tonight. There's the box, the inside box. It's kind of slick, little black box. Um, so we'll uh, we'll see how this goes. So inside the box, of course, packing materials. We get a wireless wire, just kind of a, a pamphlet that gives us a little bit of an overview of the powering, configurations, buttons and jumpers, operating system support, some FCC statements. And micro tick, I love it. Here it is. This is a a mounting uh, template, and that is fantastic. Every manufacturer um, should include these mounting templates. That is awesome. And here is the unit itself, and you can see that it is it's not real big, but man, it's 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 pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Um, here's an edge router X for you know what? That's unfair. Let's grab the, uh, so here's the, uh, the Microtik router board hex for a size comparison. So it's not, it's not that big. It feels really solid, really solid. This bottom part slides off here. And, oh man, this thing is, see this? This is all heat dissipating, uh, set up there that's fantastic looks like we've got uh, this is probably if I had to guess that is a, a grounding lug looks like there's another uh, grounding lug there and then we have inside we have the reset the Ethernet and the power and it looks like there's some LEDs in there too uh, here's uh, one of the mounting brackets that goes with this comes with a pipe clamp each each one does some zip ties you can never have enough zip ties cable guys are freaking out right now because they don't like to see zip ties uh, and then this looks like it has a base where we can actually uh, just set it up right set it and set it up and then here is some more uh, there are screws and anchors in this bag and then Micro Tick has included this is like a PoE type adapter here that uh, you plug a barrel you can plug a barrel connector into this and your PoE and data is on this side um, and then you would plug this uh, wall wart into that so this kit's supposed to come uh, pre prepared so on the inside, uh, and I'm going to show you this because this is going to get changed anyway. So on the inside of the cover of this guy, we've got our FCC ID, 
it tells us that the role of this is this this is the slave gives me my ID, I've got my user username, password, I've got my MAC address, my serial number, and an IP address that's configured already with an IP address. The IP address of this is 192.168.88.3. So I think what we'll do on this is we will power one of these up. We'll power the slave up uh, over here. We'll self set it somewhere. Um, and then this one must be the master then. So let's take a look at this. So if I open this up, of course, it's the exact same radio. I get all the exact same stuff that goes with it. But on the inside of this, you can see, maybe, so I don't know if this will focus on that. But you can see right here the role says master. So, and the IP address on this is 192.168.88.2. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to... Uh, rearrange some things. I'm going to get these plugged in and uh, we're going to get into the interface real quick. We're going to take a look at it and then um, maybe I'll grab the uh, J-arm and show you what my plan is for kind of mounting that. You can critique that uh, but I will be right back. Okay so if you can see behind me uh, I have both of the units um, going. One of them is powered with the power brick and the other one is powered with POE and they are both fighting to be king of the hill on top of that Rio link in VR. So the next thing that we did is to make sure we're in the network with these devices and that we can access them properly. Uh, I've put my machine on a static IP 192.168.88.5. Now this works because the switch that we are plugged into we are all in the same VLAN. If any of these ports were in different VLANs this would not work properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an OK on these and uh, we're going to bring up a command prompt and we're going to see there's dot two and there's dot three. So now I think we'll go ahead and uh, we'll bring these uh, up in a web browser. Alright so here's the login page for 88.2 which should be the master so they give us instead of it being admin admin we have this password that we've got to type in from the sticker and I'm assuming the hyphen has to be in there all right there we are so we can see that this is the uh, master and there is at the main you know here at the main screen there's not really uh, there's not really much to it. Here's the SSID that it's broadcasting on. It has auto frequency. I don't know, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know much about the 60 uh, gigahertz range. I'm going to be learning. I understand it's susceptible to fain raid, fain raid, rain fade, and some other things. Something about the frequency of water droplets in the air cause interference. So we're just going to take a look at this interface, and then you can see we can hit the other router. So I'm not going to do much configuration to this because it should just work. Now, I will change the admin password, but other than that, I'm probably going to leave it. Uh, well, I take that back. The other thing that we'll do is once we get it mounted and it works, I will change the IP addresses of the units so that they are in a... Uh, network here where I can manage the devices because I want to make sure these stay up to date and if I want to play around I want to be able to do that easily without having to put a static IP address on and then I can also you know put these in my NMS software keep an eye on them remotely all that good stuff so we have the router identity the SSID the frequency right here you can see is it 60,480 megahertz 60.4 gigahertz you can see that it is uh, active if this can could get to the internet we could probably do a check for updates we can do a password here and down here you see information about our wireless network then you've got web fig so if you are familiar with the microtik interface this is going to look very familiar to you. We can probably manage this with Winbox, I would imagine. And I think at some point now, what I don't know, and here's our terminal. And if anybody knows this now, please, please let me know. Um, 
but I think that this is either going to get a software upgrade or there might even be another model where you're going to be able to do a point to multi-point at 60 gigahertz. So where I can see this going besides just creating these these high capacity short short throw um, wireless links is if I'm a WISP, which we're getting into that here, uh, I can come in, I can create a micro pop in a neighborhood and I can run at 60 gigahertz where there's going to be likely less congestion, you know, instead of trying to run in the 50 um, or in the 5 gigahertz or the 2.4 gigahertz, if I can backhaul in and come in at the 60 gigahertz, I'm going to have a lot less interference in my network. So this is the same, if you've watched any of my other MicroTik videos, this is the same interface. Right here you can see that this is set up so that it's in a bridge and we are passing data. Now, these are very, very close together, so there is no doubt that they are working perfectly. Where it's going to get interesting with these devices is when we actually, um, because they're going to be mounted inside. And so um, we do a lot of exterior mounting, so I buy the Ubiquiti J arms. I buy them by the box when I buy them, 10 at a time, and I have two specifically for this project. And uh, there's, some other, there's some other mounting gear. You can mount this a couple different ways. Um, you can see that the same holes exist on both sides, so you can use this um, either way. But I will probably, uh, I'll probably mount it like this. Uh, actually, be like this. This will be facing the um, the wall on the inside. Will be here, and the radio will be kind of pointing that way through the wall. And then out at the workshop, it'll be, you know, it'll be the opposite. So. Um, this will be the wall and the radio will be pointing this way. We'll mount these guys and assuming the link comes up, everything I'm hoping will be great. I will be tickled pink if through two walls with this I can get 500 megabits symmetrical. So a lot of people ask me, why aren't you going to use the AC Locos that you've got? Well, the AC Locos, uh, those are, you know, a standard... Wi-Fi based setup and they are not full duplex. So when if you understand wireless networks your normal communication is a half duplex so you can't send and receive at the same time. This MicroTik and AirFiber, uh, Air, Air Fiber 5, 5U, if you ever see them they look like big bongo drums, uh, but even the, the MicroTik falls into this where it is a full duplex communication so you can send and receive at the same time. So that allows some things like I've got uh, some applications that are latency sensitive and they are database driven programs. And if you've ever tried to use those over a wireless link, if you get just a few too many uh, clients and you're you're having some congestion on the wireless network the application fails with well, this may this may fix that I don't know but I'm really excited about this and um, just to show you that the link is up here is the page and we did do the ping so I'm not um, I'm not a hundred percent sure I don't know can we do a I don't know if we can do I've never done a speed test um, here on the uh, the micro tick so give me just a second all right so as far as I know by default uh, micro tick doesn't come with iperf I don't even know if iperf will run on micro tick but you have B test and so what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, log into the other side of this I gotta I gotta bring up the to bring up the picture that I took because my memory is not what it used to be and uh, we'll type this password in the same password as the master uh, no, I must have typed it in wrong let's see here huh interesting well let me get this uh, sorted out real quick I'll be right back so I was using the uh, the numpad over there I must have not liked something about that but anyway we're gonna go to webfig on this guy and uh, we'll go down to tools and we'll go to B test server 
and make sure that this is okay. So we'll hop back over here, go to bandwidth test, and we'll do uh, 192.168.88.3, and we'll do send and receive, and we'll start auth failed. Uh, must be forgetting something here. Let's undo authenticate and see what happens. Connecting, running, 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 running. So you can see that the uh, transmit receive, the current is climbing, 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 climbing. And these things are so close together. This is a really bad test. Um, these things are way too close together for wireless. Even so, 700 and some megabits per second. So, yeah, that's not too bad. But look at all the packets that we're losing and everything. Yeah, this, don't, don't do this. Don't do this with regular Wi-Fi either. Some, some people will put their phone right next to an access point and wonder why they have bad performance. Your device is not supposed to be that close to the, to the device. So yeah, so we're getting some decent throughput, even though um, this test is, don't yell at me. I just, I full disclosure, this is not a good test, but I wanted you to see that, that these are both hooked up and they're running. Those are way too close together. I wish I had a banana for scale, but uh, they're just, they're really way too close together. They're like five inches apart. So um, it is what it is, but I wanted you to at least see, I wanted you to see that they uh, they are working. So the next step, you know, I thought about this. You know, you already know about the mesh. You already know about the switch. You already know about real link. So in the next video, we're gonna just we're gonna go. We're gonna run cable. We're gonna mount these, and then we're gonna cross our fingers and turn everything on, and see if we get a connection. So that's what's gonna come in the next network expansion video. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe, please comment and share, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to talk to us on the Discord channel, the link is down there. Charlie is our admin. He does a fantastic job. If you want to buy any of the gear you see here on the channel, we do have that Amazon link down below. If you need IT consulting for voice over IP, wireless, networking, security, the whole gamut, even programming, Go to h5llc.com, fill out that contact form, and somebody will contact you as soon as possible. Once again, I really do appreciate each of you being here, and I'll see you in the next video.